It's the fourth most densely populated city in the world. The capital of a fast-growing economy, Delhi's population grows at the rate of 4% every year. To keep pace with the future, Delhi needs to stay on the move. This puts massive pressure on its road networks. A growing demand for innovative methods to better the public transport network had been a constant challenge for the city's administrators. Roads were already packed to maximum capacity, so a new mode of transport would be needed. Today, rising to the challenge, zipping through the nerves of the city and carrying more than 1.5 million passengers every day is the Delhi Metro. On the 3rd of May 1995, the Parliament of India approved the construction of the Delhi Metro. In a first of its kind, the Government of India and the Delhi Government had sanctioned a mass rapid transport system in a bid to improve the quality of life of the citizens of Delhi. To deliver India's largest transportation sector project since independence, a new organization had to be set up. A Delhi Government search team set out to find the person who would successfully set up this organization, initiate and run the Delhi Metro. We had just signed a contract with Japanese for 6,000 crore uh, financial aid at that time in Tokyo and so they were getting worried also who's going to be the chief executive. This was the central ingredient, a leader with experience, integrity and single-minded goal-oriented focus. One name that fit the description perfectly was that of Mr. E. Sridhar the man behind the successful construction of the Konkan Railways, over 750 kilometers of tough terrain across three states. Mr. Sridharan stood like a rock those days, and we really had, uh, I mean, an ordinary person I know would have lost his, you know, cool, and he, but he kept on, he was absolutely a very, not just persistent, but I mean, and technically right and, and very tactful, very, you need all those qualities apart from the high integrity. Sixty-five years old and soon to retire, Mr. Sridharan's name was recommended to the state and central governments. In an example of administrative novelty, Mr. Jay Krishnan convinced the then Prime Minister, Mr. I.K. Gujral, of Mr. Sridharan's capacities. The offer was made. They persuade me to take up this assignment. I put a few conditions. I first of all said, if I'm taking up the job, I must be able to deliver in time and to the, the best standards. If that is to be done, then I must have certain powers. I must have full powers to take all decisions. Then I must have full powers to build my own team. And I don't like to have political and bureaucratic interference. These conditions I set forth when they asked me to take over this project and they readily agreed for these conditions. On November 5th, 1997, Mr. Sridharan joined the Delhi Metro Rail Corporation as its first managing director. Next step, a team of experienced professionals had to be put together. I was in the railways for more than 36 years and then I was on Kongan Railway for another seven years. So I had contact with lots of railway men, very competent technical people. So when I came over here, I was able to collect an excellent team, mainly from the railways, to form the core group for the organization. And uh, they are still with me. More than 10 years since, Mr. Sridharan and his team have not only built the Delhi Metro into an international success, but have also set a formidable example of good practices. A unique system of positive discipline ensures smooth execution and functioning of the project. However, competence and integrity 
are key virtues sought in every employee. Well, at the initial stage what we did, we started a competitive examination system. So to get into the organization, this is a public sector unit subject to pulls and pressures. There would be a lot of tendency of people trying to you know, influence the top man to give jobs to well people within the organization. But we wanted quality people. We wanted competitive, competitively qualified people. We frankly followed the same pattern as the Union Public Service Commission. With around 5,000 employees, DMRC is probably the leanest organization compared to its other public sector counterparts. We are modeled on Singapore Metro and Hong Kong Metro, which are considered the most modern metros. In these metros, they employ about 35 persons to 40 persons per root kilometer of the metro. Today, DMRC is employing 39 persons compared to say Calcutta Metro, which I think is something like 113 or even probably even more per root kilometer. The workforce of DMRC is its main asset. Unlike others in the public sector, Mr. Sridharan has adopted new management methods to raise productivity levels. Most of the employees have worked with other government departments and some are on deputation, but all agree that the way DMRC works is unique. In Delhi Metro, you take a decision, go straight to the top man, get it either yes or get it, you, know, you get a yes or you get a no. But you could see a decision in front of you, of your choice being taken and implemented. So the sense of achievement in Delhi Metro was very high. The Metro man has deep interests in spirituality and has imbued them into the DMRC management culture. I consider Bhagavad Gita as an administrative manual. The main tenet is that you do your duty, Nishkama Karma. Perform your duty without expecting any personal gains out of it. The benefit should go to the people. That is the main attitude. Now, if you, that is, this is what we try to inculcate in all our employees. Bhagavad Gita tells you on how to manage. It shows how a demotivated warrior is converted into a motivated warrior and he wins the battle, which is what we are doing in Delhi Metro. Unless you have motivated people working in Delhi Metro, how will you, how will you complete this project? How will you fight this battle? Because frankly, completing this, this project in a city like Delhi, mind you, a city like Delhi, is very, very difficult. I have not taken any lessons from the classic, classic management texts. The management techniques adopted in Delhi Metro are real common sense, ground earth type of methods. We feel that maximum productivity is possible by enthusing people, by encouraging them, and then the leader setting an example to them. Mr. Sridharan has himself stood by his team on the ground, leading from the front, setting high standards. Sanctity of public funds, deadlines and quality standards are held in high regard at DMRC. The goal is sacrosanct. Always complete every phase of the construction on time and within budgets. No compromises. Every Monday at 9.30, the top management meets, all the heads of departments concerned, we meet. There is no agenda for the meeting, there are no minutes drawn for the meeting. But in that meeting, we discuss what all happened the previous week, what is our agenda for the current week and what we should do for the future. Things are discussed, ideas are invited from everyone and we take consensus decision. A decision is taken and that is recorded. That is how we manage the matters. There is not much of paperwork allowed. And the first Monday of the month, we get even the middle management officers also into this group. Participatory, swift and decentralized decision making, empowering staff through delegation of work. These management principles are often difficult to practice, but hold the key to achieving challenging targets. I believe very much in giving freedom to my officers and giving them ample delegation of powers. The way I had enjoyed a lot of freedom in taking decisions, they must also have the same freedom. In fact, I want to encourage them that even if it is not within your powers, please take the decision in the interest of the organization and go forward. Except in a case where there is an accident. When an accident happens, we don't spare a person. That, that is not allowed. A train accident, we don't tolerate. No castigation, no charge sheets, 
no explanations. The management believes in motivating employees and supporting them. DMRC has no trade union, just a staff council that discusses day-to-day -day affairs and makes recommendations for improvements. They have incorporated employee management as an important element of the work culture. Perks and allowances, welfare schemes, rewards for exemplary work drive the employee to be productive. The work culture in Delhi Metro is such that everybody is dedicated and everybody is very loyal, they are very enthusiastic and uh, nobody is looking to only return from working here. They want to contribute to the organization. The 79-year-old leader and architect of this work culture is soon to complete his tenure at DMRC. An organization built on his vision will be handed over to a successor. Speculation arises whether the system will hold well through the change in leadership. A certain work culture has been evolved and it is a part of our DMRC's uh, existence today. And this will continue, according to me. Whoever comes here, the same work culture has to continue. The main thing is the independence that the organization enjoys today. You see, the government has recognized that having given the freedom, independence and power, we are able to deliver things. So the government is not interfering today. I don't think anybody is wanting to interfere in our working because they know that we are able to perform well. And ultimately, if we perform well, the credit goes to the government. We don't carry the credit ourselves. It is the government that gets the credit. So the government also will not try to interfere in, what, in, the, in the working of this organization. So I think anybody who comes after me should be able to take the, the, the organization in the same, with the same uh, philosophy and the, in the same, same work culture. It's possible. Ten years of the sustained success of a government-run social sector project, infusing the economy with speed and energy. This is an achievement based on a culture which Mr. Sridharan believes should be replicated to implement other large public delivery projects across all sectors throughout the country. Yes, the DMRC model is certainly replicable. Indeed, I feel that this is necessary if the major public sector projects are to be implemented in the country. The head of the organization should have full powers, full freedom, and there should not be any interference.